sexyhackers.com Once upon a time, there were a few young girls with a passion for literature, a love of the written word, an inspired infatuation of... Okay, fine. We were a bunch of super dorks with no friends. We spent all day hiding out in our rooms, reading books that were maybe a little inappropriate. Okay. Hello and welcome everyone to Who Let Me Read This, the podcast where a group of lady human beings, I think we can agree on that term, uh, review the sometimes terrible books of our young adulthood lives, uh, the 80s and 90s, depending on our age here, Michelle will never admit it, Mm -mm. Uh, and why (laughs) on earth we were allowed to read these books. So welcome ladies, welcome back. Uh, Today we are continuing our review of My Sweet Audrina by V.C. Andrews. We uh, so it took us our first couple episodes just to get through the basics of the plot. Oh God. Holy cow! There's a lot going on mm-hmm. in here. It's densely written, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, Except for that hundred pages. <laughs> Except for the hundred pages that are super boring. <laughs> that you can have pacing is issues. The stock market. Uh, yes. <laughs> so now we really get to dive into some of our favorite parts of the book. Uh, so we're gonna. Let's just go on down the line. Um, And if you ladies want to go ahead and introduce yourselves and then dive on in. Uh, Today we're going to be covering our our real what the fuck moments from this book. I mean, it's a whole what the fuck book. It really is. It really is, yeah. But there are some just real shiners that are extra special. Um, Michelle, are you indicating that you do not want to start? And you no, I do. From this? Oh, I, I do. You're super excited. <laughs> for this. I was there like, I'm ready. She's I'm like, Michelle White. Um, very beginning, uh, Mandy suggested it. I started reading it. And the very beginning, they described the dad. Who, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> to me, sounds amazing. <laughs> and I immediately messaged Mandy and said, I want to do it with the dad. And <gasps> she said, oh, that'll change. But guess what? It didn't. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, in Michelle's defense, I feel like Damien must have a magic dick. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Because every woman mm-hmm. in this book goes for it. Wants and he it, is yeah. straight up human garbage. Yeah. The way so they has got to be something. him, though, is so hot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does. He does sound like a, like a daddy. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So just w- what is it about the description, Michelle, that is is so attractive? What are some of the choice words that I VC mean, uses? Th- his fa- his fashion sense. He's very concerned mm. about his fashion sense. Mm. His yeah. slick back hair. He's a little bit mean. <laughs> <laughs> a little? A little. A little. <laughs> he's the boss. I don't know. I, I, he's got <laughs> thick toenails. <laughs> That part I blocked out. Toenails. <laughs> what? They mentioned his toenails so many times. So many. So many. Like at least three or four times, which <laughs> I would argue any mention of a character's toenails, especially like with regard to their thickness specifically, is a, a choice, Yeah. so to speak. Am I like remembering this correctly that there is something about like other people grooming his toenails for him? Uh, shaving, he does make everybody watch him shave. Yeah. Okay. But I didn't remember anything about the toenails other than how thick they were. So thick. Should I read Papa's description? You should. You should. Okay. My papa, six foot five and weighing well over 200 pounds, was the tallest man I had ever seen, though Vera was always telling me there were many men who were taller. (laughs) He's the only Especially base. Basketball players. <laughs> <laughs> Papa's hair was the darkest black, looking blue sometimes in the sunlight. He had beautiful almond-shaped eyes, so brown they appeared black, and his lashes were so long and thick they appeared false, even though they weren't. He had smooth, soft skin that often appeared ruddy in winters, and richly bronze in the summers. I mean, oh, he does yeah. sound real hot. And yeah. they talk about how well he dresses, and, and his attitude... I, I appreciate which says more about me and less about him. But <laughs> I mean, I get it. I've dated some attractive, well dressed pieces of garbage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we sure. talked about that last night, actually. Sure did. <laughs> Not current. 
Oh, I should clarify that. Sorry, honey. <laughs> Not correct. Asterisk. <laughs> Ast. <laughs> oh. So I guess that was one of my what the fucks. More about myself, though. Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you discovered something about yourself that really made yeah, you. Yeah, several times during this book <laughs> I discovered things about myself. I think it was more self-exploratory for me than it was what the fuck. Because I didn't find things that strange. And then everyone else was like, that was fucked up. And I was like, oh, yeah, I was fucked up. That never happened totally. to me. <laughs> nice. Woof. Awesome. Sarah, do you want to share yours? <laughs> oh, All right. Oh, buckle up. <laughs> I, like, don't even know where to start. Um, Ren- Rensdale? Lamar. Renfield? <laughs> Lamar. Lamar. <laughs> Renfield? Dracula? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Lamar Rensdale. The piano teacher. The piano teacher is described as being so hairy. Which, like, can we pause for a moment? And both Damien and Lamar, I feel like we hear a lot about how Audrina, like, they're they're so tall and so hairy. What is your frame of reference, sweetheart? You don't leave the house. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you? Yeah. It's a lot. Also kind of how I felt when she was, like, describing the sex in any of the passages where she's talking it's about sex. Yes. What, like, how would you yeah. even know what it Think was? V.C. Andrews died a virgin. <gasps> how old was she when she was horribly injured and then had to depend on her mother for everything? A teenager. And oh. she was born in the late oh. 20s. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like she probably did. Um, Bummer. That yeah. opens up a whole other passage. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or maybe she had some sort of horrible, like, Experience? sexual trauma yeah. in her, like, sure seems past. Because like well, she I, sure, li- like, her books have a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like uh, Vera is really, like, a window into V.C. Andrew's soul in so much as uh, we hear a lot about, like, how Vera learns about things, like playing with anatomical books. And, yes. Like, you're right. Um it, the isolation of the characters, I'm just like, oh, girl, you were you were working through some things, weren't you? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Interesting. So, so yeah, the hairy, so hairy, yeah, so, so hairy. hairy. So, um, I have a few passages that I have uh, screenshotted from the Kindle oh, book. Never mind. Um, one is Vera describing um, Lamar, and then one is Audrina describing Lamar. Um, So Vera's description of Lamar. I have seen a naked man, Audrina, a real one, not just a picture or an illustration. He is so hairy. You'd never suspect just how hairy by looking at him fully clothed. His hair travels from his chest down past his navel and runs into a point and keeps on going and getting bushier until... (laughs) Stop, I don't want to hear anymore. (laughs) So... Um, which is directly before nine inches stabbing. I'm just saying. Um, should I continue? Because yep. we are going to talk about nine inches stabbing, I believe, at some point. I'm going to name I'm a sure. band nine inches stabbing. Um, right. <laughs> um, and so Vera continues. But I want you to hear more. I want you to know what you're missing. It's wonderful to have all those nine inches stabbing into me. Did you hear me, Audrina? I measured it. Almost <laughs> nine inches, and it's all swollen and hard. <laughs> so... Um, she wants her to be so jealous. Uh, Vera wants Audrina to be jealous of her. Yeah, like so I think badly. she wants yeah. her to be jealous and also terrified. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it works. The terrified part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also, can I pause for just a, just a little second? Absolutely. Um, it's also considering what Vera did and like her culpability and her rape she's like trying to re-traumatize her too oh yeah 100 oh, mm-hmm. this is yeah it's sexual abuse. i mean i love vera but she is awful yeah i i would posit that vera has her own sexual trauma mm-hmm. that um oh, is yeah. definitely tied into the ways that she acts out but yeah. uh may i just add that it would be a fantastic name for like a 90s industrial cover band is nine inch stabbing westward yeah, oh. and you exclusively yes. cover Nine Inch Nails and stabbing <laughs> the Westward songs. <laughs> TM, I'm doing it. I gotta go, TM. guys. I have things to do. Life plans. <laughs> so then, Audrina's descriptions um, about him being hairy. Um, 
One day he had his sports shirt open at the throat and his chest was very hairy, just as she'd said. She had described his naked body to me in such detail, it was almost as if he wore transparent clothes. I couldn't look his way. And then later, when she walk, when she sees the, uh, Vera and Lamar getting busy, having rough sex, which, how did you not break all your bones? <laughs> um, sorry, where is it? Okay. Petrified, as if seven years old and trapped in the rocking chair again, I watched until their violent sexual act was over and Vera was lying naked on top of his long, very hairy body. <laughs> so... Is this man the wolf man? Like, what is happening? I, which also leads me to believe that maybe V.C. Andrews was a virgin. Um, I thought that they just thought he was, he really wasn't that extra hairy. Exactly. It's just that they had never seen it. So it was normal hairy, but it seemed extra. Well, well and that's what I was thinking. Like, if I had read this when I was a little kid, what would I think that hairy, ma- hairy meant? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, would, how... How hairy would I think Harry was? Yeah. Um, because that's very different than like me now being like, oh, Whoa, he's look really hairy. <laughs> yes. Now, like, oh, that guy's really hairy is like Wolfman. Yeah. But as a child, it would have been just chest hair. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm more likely to think a man is very hairy if his like beard starts up by his cheekbone, like Got up them by Gandalf his eyes. eyebrows. Yeah. Or like has, yeah, like money <laughs> eyebrows. Yeah. But like, if your chest hair is touching your collarbone, like, that's cool. I'm into it. I'm certain. Like, Harry is not. No, uh, I actually find it gross if you don't have chest hair. It's kind of weird to me. Like, you have too many feminine hormones. Well, <laughs> let me blow your mind right now. I'm fairly certain their only frame of reference was Damien, and he seems like the type to manscape. Uh, I bet yeah. he waxes. I bet yeah, Damien 100%. waxes. Or, like, I mean, she's looking at, like, anatomical books, which obviously they're going to be, like, smooth, hairless right. body. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, their frame of reference is, like, pictures of mannequins, <laughs> basically. That's kind of what a medical and book looks dolls. like, right? Yeah. And paper dolls, yes, the paper dolls. What I happened forgot. to all the boys, Audrina? What happened to all the boys? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'll admit, I was pretty shocked the first time I was with a dude with, like, an extraordinary amount of chest hair because, I don't know, maybe because I came from a small town with lots of chemical plants. We're just not very hairy people um, in Nakusa, Wisconsin. We're also a little green, you know. <laughs> or an arm, whatever. Um, it was it was not, like, unpleasant. But the next day when he left my house, like, I looked in my bed and I was like, no, there's hair. hair. Oh, this is weird. And that was just <laughs> sorry to that guy. Whoever, you know where you are. You keep following me on social media. <laughs> Leaving a trail of hair wherever he goes. <laughs> Going off of the hair thing. So, um, so you know, you guys all know like Nick was in surgery last March and he had to get like shaved for it. And so like I came and I said, okay. Nick is her husband. My husband um, went through like four of the five stages of septic shock uh, with his stomach. He's fine now. Um, and it it's fine. Like he had a perfect hair bikini. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Thanks. Now I'm picturing him as Lamar. I love you so much, Nick. I'm sorry. <laughs> We all see him pretty often. This is going to be a delightful moment yeah, the next time we yeah. back. You can edit this out. Also, he is a ginger, so it was like a red hair bikini, wasn't it? Was, it? Oh no! It was, it was a it was a tasteful <laughs> copper bikini. <laughs> but how does he feel about piano? <laughs> mm. <laughs> also, um. I don't remember off the top of my head what the like national average penis size is, but I feel like it's smaller than nine inches. It's like five also and like a half. they're like teenage girls. Does I'm she sorry. have I'm a telling ruler? You, my ex husband did a lot of research about penises because he was very proud of his, and so <laughs> I know I roll. Um, five point one inches. inches. I, what did I just say? Exactly. Thank you. Our, our amazing and producer just has just shown it's five point one inches. Was. Guess what? I'm calling Your bullshit on this sucks. Vera. You did not yeah. measure. Also, like, you are a young teenager, and that's... 
Listen, with her flair yeah. for drama, I'm 1,000% picturing Vera, like, busting out of her bag a tape measure to be like, I must know. <laughs> so I can taunt my sister cousin with it. There's feathers on the tape measure. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to like it. <laughs> I don't yes. know. But so also, Harry, would that not make things shrivel? I'm sorry. <laughs> that's got to be terrifying to come at you. Come here. <laughs> See, I pictured it more as he asked her to do it, like, because... <laughs> This is Let's true. He is, is come on a over. full on pedophile over so there. Oh, speaking right. from personal experience, <laughs> those are those are some pretty delightful what the f moments there. All right, before we move on to Mandy, we want to take a second and say thank you to our awesome sponsors here at SexyHackers.com for this killer space amazing uh, make sure you go on their website check them out um, and check out some of our sweet t-shirts uh, Andrea I've been trying to again read yours <laughs> yes. but I can't read sideways yes um, mine is Bigfoot uh, and it says believe in yourself when no one else does um, Aww. Aww. yes inspirational yeah so inspirational yes. <laughs> we should all aspire to be like Bigfoot <laughs> believe <Fair. laughs> believe I love it all right Mandy, I can imagine that you have some really special WTF moments about mm-hmm. this book because they came deep from your childhood <laughs> and yes. um, as you've re-experienced them now. And I would love I would love to dig into those. Okay. Um, so Andrea had, and I had a conversation about how we kind of share a WTF moment. Um, Andrea, I am gifting you a Borscht snowball. <laughs> and I am... <laughs> um... And, you know, I thought about it and I thought about it. And um, I just went with um, the clearest memory of, like, the first time I read it, which, like, sticks with me. And that's the ending. It is. It's the rough. ending mm-hmm. was my WTF moment. Because um, there's been, like, there's just great little flickers of hope throughout this book where she's like, I'm not letting any man stand in my way. I'm busting out. I'm going to do this. And She learns time. to tell time. She learns. Yeah. She, like, <laughs> gets an education. It's um, and it's so heartbreaking after, like, everything she went through. Um, con- like, her husband boning his mistress in her, um, in her hospice room stands out pretty starkly. And it's like there's nothing left for her in this house. And she's all set to leave. She's got his her dad's. What did she take? It's a really nice car. His oh yeah, because he's Martin. got like fancy cars from all Does his stock market Martin? frog. He has. Um. Oh, this is just a preview for like shitty white fern. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Mercedes. The Mercedes. Like, yeah. It's because of her dad. And she's Get that like, Benz. I'm getting in the fuck out of here. Give me your Mercedes. Goodbye. And he's like go there's nothing and she's like okay I don't care and um she can't get Sylvia to come with her we're just drug the which bitch which doesn't <laughs> make any sense because Sylvia followed her her entire life and wouldn't yeah. go more than three feet away from her so why suddenly won't she go that is a mystery also Mm-hmm. And how yeah. old is Sylvia? I have a head at this point? Like seven? No, she's ten, 10 when she saves her. Yeah. So ten it's or 10, eleven. Ten or eleven. You can pick up a ten year old. You can throw him in a car. Just yeah. yeah. Problem. It's fine. <laughs> and um, so like Sylvia won't go. She's like, okay, well, fine. I'll leave Sylvia. And I'm like, okay, you know, you you really have to look out for you. And then she's like, oh, I have this premonition. Something terrible is going to happen to Papa. And whether Who it be cares? like <laughs> he falls down the stairs or like maybe Good. like the feds, <laughs> like maybe the feds catch up to him because oh, that's like, right. that he's been like ripping off old ladies. Yeah. And like making his money off of the backs of like these women who like trust him with mm-hmm. their money. And their that investments. was the boring part of the book was yeah. them describing yeah. how he like uses the, the stock market to fleece old ladies. Yeah. Money, numbers, stocks. Yeah. And then they, 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 they try to frame her decision as like, oh, I'm finally the first and best Audrina. This is how I get her gifts is like ultimately like putting myself aside and going back. And, yeah. like, that was my what moment. Because I did. I threw the book. 
Yeah. As a, yeah. As like, I as too a book. It's schooler. a football, like, spike the book moment of, like, For sure. I was heartbroken and disappointed. And I yeah. sometimes, like, I wonder, did she want it to be uplifting or did she want it to be, Maybe like, Maybe because a, a Lucy Andrews movie. never got to get out of her situation either. Yeah. 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 She wouldn't even know where to go with that. She was trying to frame it as empowering because she was trying to feel mm -hmm. better about her situation. Yeah, but it's just... She could have gotten a For those of us who can walk. She yeah. could have, like, Out of become our a house therapist. Or a wheel she could have become an advocate for disability rights. Yes. Like a trailblazer right? exactly. with Sylvia. Instead, she, like, stays, like, with to, like, protect this man who, like, took her trauma <clears throat> and messed with her in, like, these indescribable ways because the way she was dealing with her trauma initially made him and others feel uncomfortable. Yeah. It was a different time. <clears throat> yeah. It's not great. So. It's not yeah. great. That's a, that's that's a, a big WTF. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, Andrea, you have... Yes. You have a list I, of WTFs that yeah. I am really <laughs> excited for. Yeah. All right, fire away. Um, so uh, thank you, Mandy, for softballing one to me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think for me, um, as I have uh, discussed with a few people going into this, I feel like I went into a fugue state reading this book <laughs> because it's so, like, okay. cyclical in its um, – traumatic experiences for the characters um as we counted off there's what four victims of the stairs um like every female character experiences some sort of sexual trauma mm -hmm. um there's gaslighting there's brainwashing there's so much voyeurism um mm -hmm. vc you okay um there's just a lot to unpack and i think the thing that broke out of the sort of repetitive nature of all of the traumas to me was the miscarriage scene oh. <laughs> Um, yeah. because yeah, like in a book full of terrible, terrible people, Vera is also terrible, um, and pretty unforgivable for her role in what happens. Um, but also she is sort of the, the lens of the audience of she's like sort of trying to help in her weird way of toxicity and awfulness. I mean, she's the only one that will really tell her anything. Yeah. And so you kind of like latch onto her as this bastion of like, this is the only person who realizes how buck wild everybody else is. Um, and so although she, Elspeth a little bit yeah, does that Elspeth too. does have her moments. Before um, she gets thrown down the stairs. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, as you do. But uh, Vera miscarrying and just like the description of her, um, after that happens, they have an argument, and she's, like, on the floor, like, writhing in her blood, and then picks up a clump of it and throws it at her mother. Mm. And the description of it, like, plopping against her mother's apron. <laughs> and then her mom is just like, clean the carpet. This is gross. Takes off her apron and bakes a pie. Because this is the most well-adjusted family of all time. Can I pause? Because I have the passage. Yes. Because yes. it's not just yes. the, the, the whole taking off the apron. Yes. This cold ass bitch. Yes. Listen. Mother, cried Vera, looking weak now and ready to faint. I've just miscarried. And you worry about the rug? <coughs> the Oriental is valuable. <laughs> <laughs> like that Damn. is cold. <laughs> cold blooded. Um, and so that. Also, I believe we find out later that nothing in that house is valuable. It's all like. Yeah, it's all fake. Like, yeah, it's, fake it's, or, like, poorly cared for garbage. Yeah. So that was, I feel like, to me, in the sort of, again, just, like, blur of shenanigans and nonsense and insanity of this book, that, to me, like, kind of was a, a gut punch of, like, wow, okay, cool, uh, this is where we're at now. And then we just dive right back into all of the other shenanigans. So it was a, a break in the monotony of... <laughs> complete and total bonkers plot developments. Yeah. <laughs> and very much treated like, oh, by the way, here's this like super bonkers yeah. traumatic thing. And then they move on in like a page. Exactly. It's just done. Like, never yeah. mentioned again. They don't know. They never reveal who the child is. It's maybe Arden's. Yeah. It's maybe Lamar's. Maybe it's Damien's personal headcanon. Okay, hmm. I, ha I that Vera share your headcanon. Or that trauma after that? Like yeah. be affected right. in any way. Well, no. I guess she's affected. She girl has some stuff to deal with. Solid one. Oh, uh, did we, during the plot, 
recap, I don't know if we ever made explicit to the listeners, um, Vera is Damien's child. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, yep. yes. Damien boned Vera's mom and then broke up with her, or, like, left her, her after she got pregnant, left her for her, like, prettier sister. Who was yeah. a virgin. Who was, yes, who was a, a virgin. virgin. Because that's very important to Damien. He's yeah, like, yeah. purity. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot Shame. of, like, purity politics and... Yeah, it's real gross. <laughs> yeah, there's there was a conversation during the tea time where like they actually aren't when they're like take time from like tearing each other apart and they talk about how um Lucky had a brief flirtation, depending on how you look at it, flirtation or the man was grooming, grooming. her, um, with her piano teacher. And um Piano teachers. And never trust oh, a piano teacher. No. And Lucky is like, no, we we never had sex. And Elspeth's like, yeah, because, um, and she's like, but I wish we had. And she's like, and Elspeth's like, no, Damien would not have had you if you had not gone into that marriage a virgin. Yeah. Which makes this thing with Billy kind of questionable, but you do you, I guess. Standards change over the yeah. years. I suppose. Yeah. He's become more open. Well, and I think it becomes more important to him to have someone taking care of him. This is true. Like he, for a while, like Audrita gets plugged into that role. Yeah, and then, like, which is while. creepy Vera, too. Like it's it's all bad, you guys. It's gross. It's real mm-hmm. gross. And that's why I think that's why her staying is like so infuriating because like she's gonna be stuck in that in oh, that yeah. role like an. She's going to be stuck in that role until um, Sophia is uh, Sylvia, old enough. Sylvia. Sylvia, whoever, whatever the crap her name is. <laughs> um, until Sylvia is old enough to do it. Yeah. Well, Sylvia will never do it. She can't even speak. I have a headcanon about that, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are the little, like, moments. Yeah, there it's are the more moments than a headcanon. I think that is what your headcanon is probably canon. But we'll go into that when, yeah. Conspiracy theories? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Next yep. episode. Totally. Next, Next episode, episode, conspiracy theories. Absolutely. But, like, long story short, I mean, in terms of her staying, it is, I mean, I think from V.C. Andrew's place she was coming from, it's not great. Um, in reality, I mean, it does 100% make sense that her her entire experience for her life has been being gaslit and brainwashed and abused. Mm-hmm. And same thing with her mom and her aunt and, like, literally everyone she's ever met. So, like, it's one of those heartbreaking realities where it does – 100% makes sense, and you do not want it to, because it yeah. sucks. Yeah. But, like, it's all she knows. And also her weird psychic bond with Sylvia. It's, yeah. There's, yeah. There's a lot of hand-wavy stuff and a lot of very sad, depressing things mm. <laughs> to consider about the implications. But whatever. Very nice. Awesome. Um, I know there were a few more uh, WTF moments that, that we had discussed earlier. Does oh, yeah. anyone want to, you guys are all so considerate. <laughs> Everyone's like, I'm going to do one and then move on nicely and take our turn. Uh, this is so refreshing in this podcast. No one talks over each other. It's because we're all jog women. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I, let's, let's continue on. We've I mean, that left. stood out to me the most was that tea party. I just couldn't. I just couldn't. It's a with trip. The tea party. <laughs> it is I a mean, trip. I wanted more tea party. I wanted more tea party. I mean, to be clear, they're sitting in a parlor. The two women who live there just are just getting like super shit house up, drunk. Dressed up. They have their yeah. tea. They bring out the photo of the aunt. They talk about how the aunt, we don't know how she died, who she is, but she, they, disappeared. she, she disappeared. She was a missionary. She joins them, you know, and you're like, okay, this is weird, but maybe they're just playing you know, honoring their aunt and they're having this polite conversation. They pour a little booze in their tea. Who's not guilty of that? And (laughs) Audrina drinks whatever. And um, they just talk. And then all of a sudden they start using a fake voice to speak for the picture as and and insulting each other. Just like, remember when you did this? Remember (laughs) when you did that? And you're a whore and da, da, da. And I'm like, what the is Maybe your husband right would now. love you more if, if you yes, and I that stood out to me almost more than anything. I wanted more tea party, and then they don't let Vera ever come, but she sneaks out of school and hides to watch these tea parties, yeah, which is that. like you know she's such an evil cunt that like <laughs> I love her, right? Yeah. I hate her and I love her. Um, and it just 
like I said, I'd really like to just have that option with some people so that we could just get all our shit out. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's definitely um, in a, a book full of deeply, deeply flawed and traumatic coping mechanisms. It's somehow the least weird. It, when you yeah. really put it that way, yeah, okay, we're getting our shit out without like, yeah. making a scene, I suppose. Also, so. I do want to know more about Aunt Mer- Mercy, 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 Marie. Mayor, Mercy, Mercy Marie. Marie. Yeah. Aunt Mercy Marie. Aunt Mercy Marie. Like, I want to know more about this lady because they're like. picture her well, looking maybe. like? There's a, I mean, there's a, there's a slightly problematic uh, description of her being a bigger woman, mm-hmm. yes, um, which is a whole plot point. Which thanks, VC, great. I actually um, love that. Issues. I love that she's like an awesome fat bitch. Oh, like, I, I love, love it. That. But the weird, but that's like, like they're not great about it. Oh, yeah, shockingly, because they're, oh, yeah. they're great about, about literally anything. I mean, there's the racism, there's mm-hmm. the fat phobia, there's all of the isms and phobias and everything yeah. possible. Because, like, she's a bigger woman, and um, Elizabeth and, like, you're like, oh, she's dead. Um, she got eaten by cannibals. Oh, yep. And um, there's that. Why was she traveling to where there were cannibals? Is she, like, she, a world traveler? She was and a missionary. And then you're like, yeah, bitch. Yeah. She's a missionary. Yeah. I don't think cannibals are, like, a thing that anyone needs to worry about unless they're, like... But then Damien's, like... Veiling, race, like, veiling racism with it. And then Damien's, <laughs> like, no, no, she didn't die. Hold my hood. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Chief, she was married to a chief because uh, the, the, like the people in the jungle like fat bitches. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's all a lot. Yeah, there's digest. like a lot of. But is she a real person at all? No, she's real. You think so? I mean, there's a picture of her, so that's, yeah. she existed at some point, but is mm. she really? Listen, Michelle, let us have Mercy Marie. <laughs> I She's a bastion Mercy of Marie. hope in the sea of garbage of this book. Right? Oh. And she was like, bye, everybody. I'm going to go do something. Yeah. yeah. Even if that something was so missionary work, which the woman is of a whole other conversation. Yeah. 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 She oh. is. She is the only, she is. <laughs> She's yeah. the only one who tells it like it is and left. She's the beacon oh. of empowerment. I imagine a glamour <laughs> shot of Ursula. From <laughs> Little Mermaid. Right? See, I was okay. I was actually picturing like Large Marge. Oh, from Peter's Big both? Adventure. I pictured like like the picture of Large Marge, where she's wearing like a, the the hat with like feathers on yes. it and like a big furry coat. Yes, mm-hmm. I kind because she looks real glam in the like picture. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm gonna say that is one theory that we're gonna debate next time <laughs> on who let me read this. Thank you so much to all of our guests today. Thank you so much to sexyhackers.com for this awesome space and letting us spend our Saturdays <laughs> debating large Marge portraits. Uh, <laughs> super excited to dive into our conspiracy theories and head cannons on my sweet Audrina next week. We will see you all then. Thank you so much. Bye. Sexyhackers.com Stream Team.